Hey guys, I'm here with Sebastian, the president of Zenith. And if you're not familiar, this is a home build kit that you guys can build yourself. So if you're interested in a really capable airplane, if you guys have seen any backcountry stuff with big tuna, with the stall drags and stuff, this is what he's flying. And so I had to come by and just get a little bit more information about what they are and what they're capable of and maybe some costs for, for someone that might be interested. Absolutely, yeah, you know, so these are kit airplanes. That means do-it-yourself uh, things, you know. So as a company, we manufacture all the parts and pieces. Of course, we design the airplane first, manufacture all the parts and pieces, and ship them out to customers to build it themselves. And uh, so it's, um, you know, we focus on having airplanes that are that are easy to build because obviously you can't start flying if you don't finish building it. So, yeah. <laughs> so, the, so a big part of the focus is making it easy to build. And then uh, as a kit airplane, that's one of the wonderful things about building your own airplane, you become the manufacturer of it. So you get to choose what engine, what avionics, what wheels, and everything else. So you can really make it your own. In the certified world, that's a little more complicated to do that. Awesome. And uh, in the kit world, that's, that's uh, actually encouraged to do that. And from the ground up, these are designed to be short takeoff and landing airplane, bush planes, basically. Yeah. And that's why in the name, we call them Stoll CH750, um, you know, Super Duty with the larger version. Um, because it's short takeoff and landing. And uh, what's unique a little bit about our designs with, with Soul Airplanes is they're also tricycle gear airplanes. Uh, you know, a, a lot of typically, you know, when you think of bush airplanes, you think of a big tail dragger airplane. Yeah. And that, you know, that's done for historical reasons, I think. You know, we were able to, to build, you know, main wheel gear a lot and a tail wheel a lot better than we were able to build a good nose gear. And uh, nowadays, with today's technology, we feel we can really build a good uh, tricycle gear airplane. Advantages for a tricycle is the ground handling is quite a bit easier. The no forward visibility, especially while on the ground, mm. is better. And it's just a, lo a lot easier for low time pilots. So it's more accessible for first time pilots uh, to be able to jump into the tricycle gear airplane. Yeah, so one of my questions is, um, just looking at how close the prop is, is there anything like, is that why the tail is designed the way it is, is to get right. the nose off the ground when as soon as possible? Yeah. Or Absolutely, and that's a good question, but when you see the airplane like this, it's sitting on the ground, engine is off, controls are neutral. Um, as soon as you get that prop turning, you pull back on the stick, all of a sudden the nose comes up at least a few inches from what you're seeing right there. Okay. So right away you're getting quite a bit more uh, prop clearance. Uh, as soon as you get some forward movement going with the airplane, push it, the pull back on the stick, get that nose up in the air, and you're nearly like a tail dragger at that point because you know you're pivoting around on the you're basically the mains are on and, and your and your high tail. Like you were mentioning, we've got a high tail design on this airplane yeah. so that you, it allows you to do that. So I can't see any strut, at least visible. What do you have on your nose wheel? That's my question is like, how is it so durable, but not like just putting well, all it, that shock right it, into well, the frame? It, 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 we do have a spring in there. Like, I mean, it, it, absolutely. And it, uh, we, have a, we have a bungee system and we also have a puck system, like a donut puck system. Okay. So quite a bit of spring on the, on the front end as well. And, uh, but like I was mentioning, you know, that as a tricycle gear airplane, as soon as you're moving forward, pull back on the stick, get very low pressure on the nose wheel. So it really uh, minimizes the loads on it. Uh, another advantage with the tricycle gear, it's a fully steerable system. So, and it's direct linkage. So as opposed to, you know, a tail dragger where you're steering from behind, which we know anytime, you know, rear steering is, is you know, it's a bit tricky at times. And then with the tendency to oversteer quite easily, with a tricycle gear, that's not the case. It's more intuitive. It basically follows where you're steering. So it makes it a lot easier. So why don't you tell me about the design of the wing? It just looks a little bit different above the cockpit from some of the Sure, ones. sure. Well, the, the, the first thing you'll see is it's got a fixed leading edge slat on the front end, and then it's also got a trailing edge uh, flapper on, and it's both aileron and flaps. And, again, and like I was saying, it's a separate airfoil. So at very low speed, you're getting fresh air blasting over your control surfaces. So, you know, a lot of airplanes may have a low stall speed, but at low speeds, they get the, the ailerons get very mushy. This allows you to still have full control. Now at the at the actual uh, wing root itself, uh, the wing comes basically into the cabin area, and there's and there's a number of reasons for that. Number one, the, the wing sits above the cabin, and that's important for visibility. You know, a lot of airplanes, your wing is right at your eyesight. You're having to duck under the wing all the time. Here, the wing is above your head, so it really gives good visibility. Same thing in a turn, it's, and that's one of the reasons we, we cut back on the wing like that. In a turn, you get the, all that visibility on top. You know, in a car, you know, a skylight, it's, it's nice for light, but it's, it doesn't help you go anywhere. In an airplane, when you're turning, you're actually oftentimes, especially bush flying, you're looking through that top window to see where you're going. Yeah. And so it becomes really important part of that. And then another advantage of that is you'll see here with the prop, you get, 
you know, if you can lift your camera just a little bit and look at the tail, you, you're actually putting fresh air right on your tail section. Okay. So again, very low speeds when you're coming in, when you you just have, don't have as much airflow over your tail, uh, having that 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 that. that section coming in it just opens it up to allow fresh air on your tail on your rudder section on your elevator section so again this airplane is really maximizes slow flight handling characteristics yeah now it's gonna be different with every engine but what's an average useful load um, that you can carry in this so thing. with the ch750 super duty it's about 800 pounds is what a typical useful load is and okay. that like, like you mentioned is that's going to depend on the engine um, it makes it you know bush capable in the sense you get two people full fuel and you still can carry stuff with you you'd be able to fly out and back you know fly it fly out there and have your camping gear and then fly back out so sure it really makes it a, a bush capable airplane and then and with to, to achieve that it's about 180 horsepower we're looking at to, Okay. to do that and a lot of different engine choices um, and how much is like just the weight of the plane itself empty weight uh, empty weight without the kit you're looking probably about 600 pounds of course you know we don't we don't typically weigh an airplane without an engine because an engine is part of an airplane but it's about 600 pounds a typical empty weight once you get the engine avionics and everything else will be eight to nine hundred pounds okay so and, similar uh, to about my kit fox is around 800 pounds yeah, probably so. similar to that right okay awesome all right so why don't you just tell me about the interior here and obviously they're customizable however the customer yeah. would like what can they get from the factory as far as cutouts and things like that? Right, so you know, the, the, the instrument panel, it's really something that the customer can truly customize. And I, I actually encourage that because, you know, when you're flying your airplane, that's something you're always looking at is your panel. Now this one, obviously, this is an old school panel. You know, you got old, the old steam gauges. And as you saw on the outside of this airplane, it's kind of an army motif. And it's always kind of a, kind of a you know, retro look uh, type airplane. And that's obviously what the customer was going for. And, um, you know, and of course, nowadays, a lot of people go with glass panel displays on the inside of the airplane. And maybe we'll get a chance to look at the other CH750 uh, out here. It has an unpanel, which is just a glass screen, and that's it, where we've actually taken the instrument panel out, oh, which okay. is really a, a, quite an interesting take on that. Um, but the big thing for us, we really accentuate the visibility aspects because when you're flying off airport, you really want to be able to see what's around you, uh, especially if you're flying in unapproved areas. You know, mm -hmm. you got to make sure to, to maximize. So we've got the bubble doors and, and really what we call wraparound type windows. It really maximizes the visibility uh, uh, to do that. Uh, this particular airplane has got the standard dual stick. Uh, control setup. The, the standard setup is actually a center Y stick that you can actually fly from either side oh. and we can look at that on the other airplane as well. So okay. lots of different customizations. Uh, we work with customers to supply them um, you know as, as little or as much as they want. Uh, as, um, again most people nowadays go with the basic glass panel display whether Garmin or Dynon okay. um, glass panel setup uh, and again depending on the engine that, that you're running, you know, various uh, avion uh, engine controls uh, for that. Um, this airplane's also got a lot of space behind the seat. This is actually uh, what we call a two plus one. It's got a rear seat uh, back there, um, which of course makes a good two-seater airplane with a tons of baggage area. Area, but uh, if you needed to take somebody with you, we have that ability to uh, to do that as well. And um, back to the tricycle versus tail dragger, you know, as a tricycle gear airplane, it sits pretty level on the ground. When you're getting in and out, it's pretty easy. You're not angled back. Sometimes a tricycle tail dragger airplane, you're kind of facing up. Yeah. And uh, this is, so it makes it a little bit easier to do that specifically. So here we're actually sitting in the same cabin of the same, you know, designs, a different airplane, of course. This is actually our factory demo airplane. And this has what we call the unpanel. So pretty much all the avionics are on the one glass panel screen. I'm not going to bother turning it on here because it's so bright and so yeah. forth. But um, and it's actually a repositionable panel. So that's really cool. So for takeoff and landing, you can put it right in front of the pilot. We've got the airspeed altimeter right top and center. It's nearly like a HUD display system mm -hmm. because it's you're, it's nearly at eye right straight ahead. Yeah. And uh, then later on in cruise configuration, you can kind of push it back out of the way, and it really again opens up the side views. So for maximize the visibility, also makes it easy to get in and out of the airplane. And it just, as, as you can kind of see, it just opens up the open field of the 
the cabin area. And that's, again, the type of customization. When you build your own airplane, you really have all these options available to you. And you can be creative. And depending on your needs, uh, the type of flying that you want to do, that we can really customize that with you or you can do it on your own. That's really awesome. Yeah, just I can just see right here, man, just taxiing around, worrying about bushes and things like that. This would be a you really nice really feature. See exact. Cool. Now, what's a base model going to run a customer um, if they were to buy something? Obviously, I mean, avionics is going to change everything. Right. The engine is going to change things. but So, yeah, there's a lot of different choices. You can actually scratch build these airplanes. You know, we'll sell you just the drawings and the manuals, and you can make all your own parts. But most people go out and buy the kit, you know, because we, we, have, we use CNC equipment. You know, we do these things all the time. Kit-wise, you're about $40,000 for the airframe kit. And when I say airframe kit, that's pretty much everything except engine, no firewall back, and uh, no avionics, and then no paint, no upholstery. So you're looking yeah. probably a hundred grand, 120 grand, yeah, depending on for I've average. seen them, yeah, from 80 to, yeah, $120,000. Uh, again, depending a lot on the avionics, depending a lot on the engine. Sure. Um, Paint, upholstery, all those things uh, are like yeah. that. You know, the nice thing is, you know, especially with paint and things, and even avionics to a certain extent, you can start flying the airplane with just the very basics. And then, as you as you as you utilize your airplane, kind of figure out what what it is you want. Do you need IFR capability? Do you not need it? And things like that, you can yeah. really customize that. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sebastian, so much oh, for your time. Thanks pleasure. for just walking through this. This is really cool. I knew nothing about these, so yeah, I really appreciate yeah. your time. Oh, no, absolutely, my pleasure.